I know Ravens fans don't want to think about this, but we have to. Uh, and that is the first question of this episode. A question from Subs, a trade package for Lamar. It came from my guy Jay Fire. He said, what's up, Engraven? Your boy Jay Fire here. I'll get right into it. You've probably seen the article where Lamar says he asked for a trade on March 2nd, which is wild. So it looks like we are headed for a messy split. So what would you like to see Lamar traded for, if not just the two first round picks? I don't want to see Lamar traded at all. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to see him traded at all. And you know what? I guess I got to take back what I said earlier because there are some Ravens fans who have been thinking about this for a long time and they want it to happen. Uh, but there are a lot of us who r would rather him stay um, but to each his own. But anyway, um, what would I like to see Lamar traded for if not just the first two round pick, two first round picks? Um, besides not wanting to see him traded at all, if they did trade him and it wasn't just the first, the two first round picks, um, just a plethora of picks, even though uh, my concern would be how those picks would be used, uh, because it's like Eric DaCosta last year, again, last year is his best draft of his tenor with the Baltimore Ravens. And there were still some shaky spots in there. And not saying that every draft is going to be perfect. We know not every draft is going to be perfect. We get that. They're going to be some hits. They're going to be some misses. Um, but with Eric DaCosta, the drafts had been just lacking constant, consistent impact. But last year, he got a good amount of impact players uh, in that draft. Um, but if they were to trade Lamar, then I'll say as many first-round picks as you can get. Uh, like, if you can get three, great. If you can get four, great. Uh, but if it's more than the, fir the two first-round picks, then maybe three first-round picks, a couple of seconds, something like that. Um, and, and the the way that things have been going, I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, it's been it's just been really weird for some strange reason. We don't know why though. But I mean, it is what it is at this point. Um, so but yeah, I I don't want to see him go at all. But I, I still highly doubt that he stays. That's just me. I know a lot of people feel like more reassured than ever that hey, Lamar Jackson is gonna be the quarterback of the Baltimore Ravens. This September But hey we'll see We're gonna see um, But anyway he said What other QB would you want to see In a Ravens uniform <laughs> Can I choose none um, But if I had to choose Like I don't know man Cause uh, I just I feel like Whoever is at quarterback Like it's gonna be kinda unfair I'm, I'm gonna of course Root for them Welcome them with open arms but in the back of my, really in the front of my mind, I'm going to be thinking, if it's not Lamar, I'm going to be thinking, oh, man, Lamar could have done that. Ooh, oh, yeah, Lamar would have made that play. Oh, man, oh, that could have been Lamar. It, it, it's going to hurt, man. But we'll see. We'll see how things go. So I haven't really, like, thought about, oh, who, if, if, if Lamar was going, who would I want to be the Baltimore Ravens quarterback? Because I just... I don't want anybody else to be the Baltimore Ravens quarterback. He said, would you rather a rookie or a vet or trade for another quarterback? Um, mm. well, what veterans are out there? Who's left? Like, the only veteran that's out there and available, and it would really be a, like a one-year deal probably, is Aaron Rodgers. But, you know, Ravens, like, they ain't trading for no Aaron Rodgers. Um... Mm, I guess we should bring bring Joe Flacco back. Have Joe Flacco, Tyler Huntley, uh, it's Destin Bennett. So I I, I don't even know, man. Uh, he said I had hoped we could resolve this issue, but with this new article, it feels like a trade is inevitable. Uh, I will always love Lamar because he has given so much to the Ravens, but I hope he gets what is best for him. I, I like how you put that. I hope he gets what is best for him. I uh, hope you and the family are doing well and stay blessed, man. And like, and like Lamar seems to be with the Ravens. I'm out. Oof, that hurt. Ain't no chance for the man. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got a made it. Got a made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven. Right and graven. Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. For all the Team Keep It Clean patrons, and shout out to the Team Keep It Clean patrons, appreciate y'all. If you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingviz, and if you don't want to, that's fine. But for all everybody who's a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can send your question directly on Patreon. Uh, if you're not a Team Keep It Clean patron, which is fine, 
uh, you can send your question to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. And let's get into uh, some Team Keep It Clean patron questions. Uh, first one came from my guy Ace. Now, he's been a patron for 28 days, so I appreciate you. It's been almost a month. But Ace has been rocking with the channel for for years, L- literal years. Um, I remember seeing his name and continue to see his name from a long time ago. So I, I appreciate you, man. Uh, anyway, he said, what's up, Engraven? It's been a long time since the last time I hit you up. I still watch your videos every day. I hope you and the fam are doing well. Hey, I appreciate that, Ace. He said, I got one question for you. Do you think the moment is too big for the Ravens to handle with Lamar Jackson's contract? I want Lamar to stay, but my heart tells me he will be traded. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Side note, my wife has been giving slack about watching your videos, but lately I have been catching her watching videos. Keep up the excellent work. Uh, and like Jiro, I'm out. Hey, I appreciate it. Shout out to the both of y'all. Man. I appreciate y'all, man. Uh, hey, that's special right there, man. Um, but is the the moment too big uh, for the Ravens to handle with Lamar? I don't think it's too big for them. I do think um, if we just talking contract, really, I mean, we can't separate contract from everything else. Uh, and that's a really, really good question. I, I don't think, um, as far as the contract, I think they lessened uh, how big the contract moment was because, again, you know, all the owners are, they, they, they are with each other on this one. Like, hey, we don't want this thing to be fully guaranteed. And even if it ain't fully guaranteed, we don't want the, them, the crazy amount of guarantees that that guy Lamar Jackson wants. We don't want that. So that moment, it, it got made smaller by all the owners just being locked in with each other. Um, now, as far as Lamar Jackson, just strictly as a player, I do think that moment was too big for the Ravens. It shouldn't have been, and that they had every reason to not make it too big for them, but it ended up being too big for them, and they 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 could have handled it, but they didn't handle it. They didn't, um, because Lamar Jackson has been probably the best Ravens offensive player like ever. Best Ravens offensive player ever. And that's against like the Jamal Lewis's, the Ray Rice's, the the Shannon Sharps, the Todd Heaps, the Dennis Pitters, uh, the the Tory Smiths. The it, like he's been. I mean, <laughs> like he ain't really got too much competition, but still, you know, Ray was been defense played be the defensive team, but Lamar has been that guy, that guy for them. Um, but they they just failed the last three years. They just failed to really, like, put the best of the best around him. And they failed to do a better job of putting more pieces around him to make his job easier and to make the entire offense's job uh, easier. Um, There have been injuries uh, that mess some things up. Uh, I was just talking to my guy, uh, Frank, about it yesterday. Um, But even with that, like, because remember last year had Ravens, they they started off a little hot. Then uh, Bateman went down, and then things just – Change from there It was never the same after that But my thing was like Hey It, it shouldn't have been Bateman a bust It shouldn't have been Bateman a bust Especially a contract year For Lamar Like come on now Even Again Last three years After 2019 That should have been like Alright let's do it But they didn't do it So That part of the moment It seemed like It was too big for the Ravens Because it seemed like They just They had this special Special player But They didn't know what to do the next two questions came from my guy David M Who has been a patron for 24 days I appreciate you David He said Ain't Graven Congrats on getting your monetization back Happy to hear things are going well In terms of the whole YouTube situation Hey I appreciate that David Thank you He said within a few minutes I saw the Ravens announce That they signed Nelson Aguilar And then the Panthers came out And said that they signed DJ Sharp I, I think this really says a lot uh, About how differently EDC values wide receivers From other GMs uh, How do you think this move From the Ravens looks And what do you think it says About how we'll move forward In free agency in the draft um well that that move um it, it scared me because i thought it was a solid move um nelson Aguilar can make some plays obviously he's known uh, for his drops um last year his drops were down last two years since he's been with the patriots his drops are way down but so is his production so i'm sure they go hand in hand um but i was worried because i was worried uh, about how this makes since the ravens already they have a limited amount of cap space um now again if you really want somebody you can get them you can make it happen you can get creative uh but it just but ravens are not a team to do that 
Now this year they have been doing the whole thing with the void years and whatnot, and that's not something they normally do. So they've been getting a little more creative this year, a little bit. Um, but I'm still not sold that I right, uh, with limited cap space. It, it's been said that they've been looking around at DeAndre Hopkins, Odell Beckham Jr. and um, and Cortland Sutton. Uh, but I'm just not confident and not sold that I right, they they gonna definitely make a move for one of those guys. Um, so with that being said. Uh, as far as EDC, how he values wide receivers versus other GMs, um, the same value is not put on that position as it is with other GMs. He'll try in the draft. He'll he'll take some shots in the draft. Obviously, two first round picks of Hollywood and, and Bateman. You got Duvernay third round pick. You got Proche, who I always forget whether he was a fifth or sixth round pick. You got Tylen Wallace. He was a fourth round pick. You got Miles Boykin. He was a third round pick. So he'll technically take the draft shots. But he'll take the shots that have a, a lower chance of hitting. It's like he will take the three point shots from half court. He'll take he'll take a lot of those, but the layups he'll be like, oh no no no, I I ain't doing that. You know the layups cost a little more money, but he don't take the layups. Uh, he also said. Now that we know that Lamar requested a trade as of March 2nd, what do you think of the previous reports uh, of the Ravens speaking with Anthony Richardson? Do you think that's just the Ravens doing their due diligence or perhaps they've been looking to move on from Lamar since he requested the trade or even earlier? Um, I just think they just staying ready. Like if they do trade Lamar, like, hey, we know about Anthony Richardson. So just in case if he's available, whenever we get whatever picks we get, whatever picks we have, if he's available, then we know if we want to take him or not. So, I mean, this whole thing, like it, it just... I don't think it's a big deal that they met with Anthony Richardson and seen him because they they got to try to be as prepared as they possibly can too, whether they have Lamar or whether they don't have Lamar. Next question came from another patron, my guy Kevin. He said, uh, "Tough day." Lamar said goodbye to us today. Uh, that's not leverage. That's a man taking control of his future. Uh, I'm sad as a Ravens fan. You chose not to pay him. Chose not to develop him as a passer. Uh, do the right thing. Trade him and get a boatload back and move on. Um, so with that part, um, this, he sent that on the day that Lamar sent out his, his letter to his fans. Um, and yeah, that, that, that was crazy. And it is him trying to take control. Um, and I think it's really him just, uh, I, cause I, I, I've talked to a lot of people about this and, and I've seen a lot of people have conversations about this, but in my opinion, I, I, I cause a lot of people have been like, oh, he should have never did that. He shouldn't have said that. It's probably because, um, the market for him is, is, is nothing's happening. He's trying to get something ramped up and that could be the case but i really think that it's just him tired of being mr nice guy T tired of being mr nice guy i know there have been people who've been uh, like oh man all that stuff that he's putting on twitter needs to stop I, I think he's tired of other people uh writing the narratives for him and now he's like ah right, you know what i'm gonna I'm control my own narrative for for years and years and years it's always been somebody saying something it's always been somebody, oh, Lamar this, Lamar that. And he, a lot of times he's just sat back. There have been some times where he would come out and address it. But when he came out and addressed it, everything was like, oh, my goodness. Whoa, Lamar, what, where are you coming from with this? Because we would be so used to him not addressing it. But now he's like, you know what? No, I'm going to make this a normal thing. I'm addressing all this stuff. The injury, uh, hey, that's my PCL. I wish I could be out there with my guys like right, what was that, right before the playoff game, I think. I wish I could be out there with my guys, but my, my PCL ain't right. It's not. So the, the the report came out that he uh he turned down a or he missed out on a, a a shoe deal, and he said, "Oh, that's cap." The um just everything he he just been addressing stuff. He's been addressing stuff a lot more a lot more frequently uh, over this off season. So I guess Lamar was like, "You know what? I got, I got time now. I got time, and and I'm not I'm not letting other people write the narrative anymore." Um. Now, as far as uh, he said, I'm sad as a Ravens fan, you chose not to pay him. They did try to pay him. They gave him contract offers, but it's not up to his standard of what he wants. So we can't say they didn't try to pay him or they didn't pay him. They tried to pay him, but it's Ravens standard, <laughs> not to Lamar. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then he said, chose not to develop him as a passer. <laughs> now, that part. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then he said, do the right thing and trade him and get a boatload back and move on. All right, that's what I think is going to end up happening. They end up being traded, but we're going to see. We're going to see. I've been, I've been wrong before a lot. Maybe wrong again, but, yeah, that's that's the way I think this thing is headed. So, we'll never know till we know. 
And then the following day, he said, day two, unless there's a bidding war for Lamar, there will be no trade. Oh, I guess uh, I guess March 27th, my boy was a little emotional. He was like, oh, trade him. Da, da, da. Then the next day, he's like, oh, okay, I guess there won't be no trade. Uh, but anyway, he said, day, day two, unless there's a bidding war for Lamar, there will be no trade. Only reason why Watson got that contract, it would take two teams fighting, giving him and the Ravens what they want. Not likely. Uh, there is hope he may just have to stay. Oh, see, I see you, you had to change your heart. See, like that March 27th, it hit you. It hit, it hit a lot of us. Uh, when Lamar came out with that, it was like, whoa, Lamar, hold up there. Uh, but then, yeah, I guess he, he really thought about stuff. It was like, okay, wait, well, there's a shot. Next questions came from my guy Talal, who's been a patron for six days. So appreciate you, Talal. He said, uh, Salam Alaikum, bro. How are you? Hey, we're doing good. Uh, I hope you and your family are always fine. Uh, watch the channel and glad to be a new member of the team. Keep it clean. I right, appreciate that. He said, I'm a, I'm a Ravens fan from two years ago because of LJ8. He is my GOAT. Uh, I hope he signs soon. Uh, what do you think about this? I think the Ravens give him what he asked for because he already achieved all these franchise targets. Number one, uh, sell tickets. Done. Okay. Number two, playoffs yearly. Done. Well, for that part, yes and no. When he finishes the season, yeah. When he don't, well, he still put him in position like this past year. Um, but that part, uh, just finishing out the season, that, that's got to be better. Um, he said, three, sell T-shirts and souvenirs. Done. Oh, for sure. Number four, get franchise uh, primetime match, matches. Uh, and he said, that's nice to watch. Done. Yeah. I believe uh, that's all the Ravens targets, he's, and he's achieved them all. Best wishes. Well, not all. They, that's not all the Ravens targets. I think there's some more in there, but he has certainly brought, uh, helped bring a lot of revenue uh, to these Baltimore Ravens. It just gave them a lot of attention. And when you got that attention as a business, that helps you a lot, a whole lot. Uh, and then he also said, um, I have thought how Ravens uh, have low cap space, uh, but what they miss and need is a cornerback um, and maybe a, a QB on his rookie deal. And, and can you explain everything to me? Oh, as far as uh, the, the cap space and what they miss and need. Um, the, the low cap space right now, uh, 30, a little over 32 mil. They have like, I think they have like maybe like six, seven million cap space right now. So they have some. Um, and yeah, they do still have some needs out there. Uh, 32 mil of it, a little over 32 mil is dedicated to the franchise tag for Lamar. Um, so that's taking up a lot. So whatever happens with it, whether they're going to keep him on a franchise tag and he plays on that, that's what it's going to be. If they sign up to an extension then that cap hit will be a lot lower. It'll be a lot less money on the cap dedicated to Lamar. Well, if they trade him, obviously there will be no money, uh, on the cap dedicated to Lamar. Um, and as far as the need for, for a QB on his rookie deal, the QB on his rookie deal, they they have, it's a five-year deal. Well, it's a four-year deal with a fifth-year option. So it's a four-year deal. Um, and then in the after the third year, the team has the option to be like, all right, we want to pick up the fifth-year option that will kick in the year after the next one. Or, or they can decline the fifth-year option and it can just be a four-year deal. So that's up to the team. That gives the team a little bit more control uh, over the player. Uh, who's a rookie and drafted in the first round. Now, the, the fifth round uh, option is only for first round picks. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round, there's no fifth year option with them. Um, but for the first round picks, they uh, have the fifth year option in their contracts. And their contracts, um, depending on where they're drafted in the first round, uh, then that sets the amount of money that they get paid. Uh, like, there's no discrepancy. There's not like, oh, they, I mean, they can fight for different clauses in their contracts and whatnot. But the money that they're going to make is the money that they're going to make depending on where they, what slot of the first round that they drafted in. Uh, so I hope that, oh, and as far as their the, the need, what they miss and need at cornerback, uh, well, Marcus Peters is a free agent. Um, the Ravens were actually interested in Darius Slay. And I, I thought that that was just a rumor. But Jeff Rebick said, no, that, that, that was real. Um, so, yeah, they, they are going to need corner opposite of Marlon Humphrey. Right now, it would be, if the season started today, it would be Brandon Stevens, most likely. Um, maybe some Pepe Williams in there. Uh, Jalen Alma Davis. Um, so, yeah, their cornerback's room is a little thin right now. Uh, I'm sure they would probably have Kyle Hamilton in the slot, maybe, and have Geno Stone drop back at safety next to Marcus Williams. But it, it's so early. So, 
they they got plenty more moves to make uh, because it was still pretty early in the offseason. Baltimore, huh? Don't get mad, huh? It's just what it is. 